Hey, it's Jamie from Terso here, and I wanna show you how to create a database per user with Terso. So Terso makes it really easy with its API to create databases for users. And there's a special feature for schema DBs that allows you to create one database and share that database's schema across all of its children. It's a really cool concept, and this example that I'm gonna show you right now shows how we can use this. So let's dive into the application here and I'm going to log in with my account. Of course, if you uh, don't have an account and this is the first time you're watching this, uh, you can click sign up here on the login page. Uh, once we've signed in, I'm gonna connect using GitHub. I'm gonna authorize this uh, to work. This is using Clerk up until this point, but now once we're inside the application, the application is looking at that user ID and talking to Terso to see if there is a database. If there's no database, it will just go along and create one, and it uses the schema from the parent, which is really cool. We'll dive into the code, we'll have a look and see how, how exactly that works, um, but this is just a, a rough demonstration of how the product actually works. So, now we're inside of our application, we don't have any to-dos. My first to-do, and then maybe we create another one, such as uh, record a video, and uh, maybe another one that we'll do is actually to deploy this demo. So these are all things that I can update and uh, I'm, I'm recording this video, so I'm just gonna mark that one as to do. Now with our to-dos, if we refresh this page, the to-dos here, the query that runs on this page is a select all from to-dos. There is no need for a where clause here to fetch to-dos where a user ID is at X, because this database is for you, the user, which is a really, really cool idea. And with Terso, it is made very, very easy. Another great thing that that gives you as having a database per user is you can give your database to the user. So inside of this application, if I click on my avatar and we drop down to download my data, this will take me to a page that shows me a SQL dump. And here we can see we have a bunch of different SQL just for me. And if we highlight the sections at the bottom here, we can see that we have a to-dos table with the ID, description, and the completed Boolean. And we can also see those inserts that we've just done to insert the my first to-do, record video, and deploy this demo. So we can see all of the data there, and we can see there is zero field for the user ID. This is because, like I said before, this database is for a single user. And the to-do app, it's only gonna be your to-dos that you really want to manage. Uh, so it's a really cool concept. So how does this work? Let's dive into the code and have a quick look on exactly how this works. So to see how it works, click on the avatar and click star this repository. Now, once we're inside the Gator repository that you can star, um, we can look at the code to see exactly what's going on. So let's go back up and have a look through some of the files. This is a Next.js application, and we're also using Drizzle as the ORM here. And if I go into the schema for that, we can see we only have the to-dos table that we've seen in that SQL output when we downloaded my data. So there is no need for the user table, any relations there at this point for this type of application. So if we go inside of the app folder now, we can see how we have a bunch of different uh, group routes here. So if we go to the dashboard for authenticated users, here we'll go to the page and we render the to-dos. So here inside of our to-dos component, we await a new database client, and then we use that client to query and find all of those to-dos. So if we go back and we look at our utils file, we'll be able to see exactly what that looks like. So let's load this up. And here we've got a bunch of different code for checking if the database exists. So for the get database client, this will obtain the URL. We'll look at this in just a second, but once it's got that URL, it can then instantiate a new libsql client. Then with that libsql client, we can pass that along to Drizzle so we can use the Drizzle ORM in the way that you're used to. And again, that Drizzle ORM will be instantiated for each user that logs into your application. So here we have a, a URL, which we'll look at in just a sec, and then we have an auth token. Now notice here, we are using a 
Drupal token. So instead of creating tokens per user, which you could do, here we're just using, because we're abstracting the database calls uh, to the server, we can just use a token that works for them all. That isn't a huge concern for this demonstration. So uh, this client will authenticate with that group token and pass the URL. So further on down here, we can see we have get database name, and this just calls auth, which is a helper from a clerk. And then from that, we can destructure the user ID and we can then hash that user ID. The reason why we hash this is because of the URL for Terso. There are certain limitations into the URI uh, for a database endpoint. So for the name here, it just kind of has to conform to the standards there. So if you have something like a underscore that may not be permitted, um, so yeah, it, it, or it starts with a number, etc. cetera. Um, so use an MD5 here, we can hash that and we have something that is uh, reliable. Um, but again, it doesn't really matter if it's public or not, it's just the database URL. And then to actually construct the database URL, we get the database name, and then we get the Terso org name for your account. This would be my username. Um, and then that is pretty much it. We get the libsql URL, and to do that, we just obviously get the DB name, we create the URL, and then we return the host name for the client. So, so this will be libsql slash the URL. So that's really all there is to it. When a user first logs in, they are redirected to a welcome route. And this welcome route is what calls check database exists and get the database name, or it will create that database. So here we can see we are instantiating a Terso client, and this client is what's used to talk to the Terso API. So we pass it the API token and that same organization uh, name. Then further on down, when we actually get this route slash welcome, we make sure that we're authenticated and the database exists. If the database exists, we'll redirect the user to the dashboard and they can use the to-do app because that database is ready, which is really cool. Then further on down, if the database doesn't exist, we will create a new database using the database's name. Again, that's the MD5 hash of the user ID that we get from Clerk. And then it creates a database in the group and specifies the database name as well. Uh, then further on down, obviously, if this doesn't exist, we'll just return an error and we'll redirect to the dashboard. But that is pretty much it. So let's actually now deploy this to Vercel. So how do we do that? So let's go back to the repository and down here, let's click create database. We'll notice here, we're going to sqlite.new. We can see here that we have loaded a dump file. This is just creating the schema for our database. So we can skip running the drizzle migrations on our database directly. Uh, here we can just kind of skip that step, create a database that we need. But the one thing that I wanna point out also is here where we have schema database, this is checked. And this just tells Terso to create a database that is of the type schema. And we'll look into what that means in just a sec. So here I'm gonna create a database and I'm gonna call this my to do's app parent DB. Then we'll go ahead and create this database. So just like every other app, we get some confetti and we get all of the data here that we need to proceed and progress to the next step. So back inside of uh, GitHub here, I'm gonna go to uh, sign up to Clerk. So inside of my Clerk dashboard here, here we can see we have uh, the Terso per user starter for the demo that I've just shown, but I'm gonna create a new application and just give this a name of my to-do app. And it's up to you what type of authentication options that you want to enable. We'll just go with the GitHub option because it makes it really easy. But if you wanna enable things like Facebook or Apple, we can see here Clerk makes that really, really easy. But let's just turn off those for this uh, example, and then we'll click Create Application. And that's pretty much all we need at this point. Now, if we scroll down, we see that we have some environment variables, and together with the Terso environment variables, we'll be able to deploy this and everything should be working. So back inside of the repository, if we scroll down and now go to Deploy, here is where we can give the repository a name because this is going to need to clone this repository uh, and put this inside of your own GitHub. So we'll just call this my to-do app and we'll click create. 
Now, once that's created, here we have all the different environment variables that we need to give the cell. So the first thing that we need, obviously, is the clerk publishable key. So back inside of our clerk dashboard, we can get that publishable key. Then we can paste that inside of here. Then for the secret key, we can paste that inside of there. Now back to Terso, we can get the name of our database, which is what we can pass here for our Terso database name. Then for the org, we can copy the org name and provide that here. Now we'll need to create the Terso API token. And to do that, that is the platform API token. And here, just give this a name so you can easily recognize this for later. So I'm just going to call this my to do app first cell. So I know what this is. And then once that's created, we copy that value and paste that inside of here. Now, the only remaining thing is to create a group auth token. So if we go back here and click create group token, I'm not going to set an expiry here. That doesn't really matter. Um, and I need to enable read and write access. So that will go ahead and create the token. Then I can copy that, paste that inside of here, and then we can click deploy. So this is now going to take all of those environment variables and deploy it to Vercel. So this will take a few seconds. And once it's done, we'll open the application and give it a try. So there we have it. The application has deployed to Vercel. And all we need to do now is click on this and we'll be taken to our application. So let's sign up for this application and we'll sign in using GitHub. I'm now going to authorize clerk. And then this will create me an account. And here we can see I have a fresh to do app that is completely separate from what we've seen earlier in the demo. So here the application is completely separate and isolated to this individual GitHub's account. And we can see here we have a different avatar to what we did before because that avatar was for an older account using GitHub. Uh, so you can, we can see things are completely separate. So hopefully you found this interesting and you can go on to create databases for your individual users using one of our SDKs uh, or libsql clients. But just before we wrap up the video, one thing that I wanted to show you is actually the database inside of Terso. So I'm going to filter my databases here to filter for schema only. So these are all of my different schema databases here. And here is the database that we created before from sqlite.new. And here we can see it has child databases listed. So this database here is that MD5 hash of that user. And if we click to edit this data inside of Drizzle, we'll be able to see that we have a table for our to-dos here. So that's it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you build with Terso and all the different databases that you create for your user. I'll see you in the next one.